I wouldn't eat, I wouldn't sleep. I'd cry every single night after school, and I just hated everything. I just didn't even want to be, like, black. I wished I wasn't that. This is Louise. She's talking about the toughest of times she had as a teenager in care when she was moved around 100 miles from her home in London to a suburban town. What she needed was safety and stability, but she was racially bullied and dropped out of school. She's telling her story because she wants the system to change, for children in care to be kept close to what they know. We understood that things at home were rocky, but what happened was we were, my mum told us that we're going on holiday um, and we're going to the park and then she brought us to the, the council, like the council building, and we went into a room and then, well, that was it. We don't even get to say goodbye to our mum. Louise's precious photo collection captures a family slowly fragmenting. 11-year-old Louise and her twin were weeks away from starting high school when they were taken into care. Her younger sister was eight. They didn't know what the care system was until they were in it. Our whole life was gone before our eyes and I don't think we fully understood until our foster carer had explained what was happening, that we wasn't going to go back home and that this is our new home now. Me and my little sister, we went to church, so we dressed up. My foster carer got us all dressed up. Louise's foster mum was welcoming and caring, but changing homes and lives came at a cost. Behind closed doors, the twins were arguing and fighting. The decision was taken to split them up. The worst thing you can do is separate siblings. Um, and so my whole life it was my twin and then obviously gone. We actually, we wrote a letter to a social worker and my foster care and we begged and they said no. She never came back. After her sister went, Louise was moved to a different school where fitting in wasn't easy. She stood out as shy, struggling to make friends and then the bullying began. Name calling, maybe like pushing, shoving, um, maybe people will throw stuff. I didn't really want to go in. I looked like self-esteem was low, um, I was unhappy. I kind of like stopped being who I was and just, just hated it and just dreaded going in. A kid who'd loved school started bunking off. Her grades began to drop. Without consulting her, she was uprooted again and sent away. For a fresh start, she was told. Already separated from her twin, she then felt torn away from everything else she knew. So by this time, I'd been moved like over 100 miles from where I originally started. I love London. It's the best place to be. I definitely struggled to go from like a vibrant city, multicultural, full of life to maybe a slower paced environment. Not seeing that many people that look like me um, was shocking to me because I've never not seen people that look like me. I was just predominantly white. There was a whole new reality to adjust to. New town, new people, new culture and new problems. The school had a thousand pupils um, and there was only four black people in the whole school so um, that was very daunting for me. It sounds really naive, but I thought everywhere was multicultural and diverse. That's because that's all I know. The bullying began again, but this time she believed she was targeted over the colour of her skin. I didn't know what racism was. I think I knew from a young age, like, OK, I'm Caribbean. I didn't know what that meant. I just knew, like, you know, I loved the culture, the music, the food. It was amazing. I didn't understand, like, what was happening to me and, like, people were picking on me because of that, or like, my hair or they make jokes about where I'm from. Um, it, I found it really hard because I just was like, oh, this is not fair. The impact was deep and devastating, cutting to the very core of who she was. So I would wear my afro out a lot. I stopped after a while because um, they would like, like pull my hair, they will put stuff in it. So then I just started like straightening my hair. I started to wear like lighter foundation, um, anything I could do to like not get picked on. Didn't even want to be like, you know, black. Um, I wanted to be like, I wished I wasn't that. You know, I am black and I'm proud to be black, but at the time I wasn't. She says she tried to confide in teachers, but it made things worse. She remembers being told to sit at the back of the class so her afro wouldn't get in the way. So I kind of gave up with school, um, mentally, emotionally, um, 
Like, I wasn't okay. I suffered a lot. Um, and I just hated everything. I wanted to be done with school, even though I loved education. I was really good at English. I was in the top set. I loved acting. I was amazing at it. I was like an ASR student. But because of like the bullying and, and obviously discrimination and racism, um, I just wanted it to be all be done. I felt like school for me was like a, a battle zone. She was then sent to pupil referral units where the range of subjects she could study shrank. The girl who loved Shakespeare and wanted good grades was now in free fall. The charity Become that supports care experienced children and young people says Louise's story is far too common. It's analysed local council data on children in care and the distances they were living from their home areas. 20% had been moved 20 miles or more. And if you look at the figures broken down by ethnic background, a concerning absence emerges. For a significant proportion of the children from minority groups, the distance away that they had been placed was not known or recorded in last year's data. That vital information was lacking for 35% of Asian and British Asian children, over a third. And for black, African, Caribbean or black British children, it was 23%, almost a quarter. For white children, the data was missing for only 1%. To move them you know, miles away and not be able to record it, I don't think that's, um, that's not OK because it's important, that data is important and also it shapes shapes a child's life and that living in Kent for those two years, it changed my life and even to this day, certain things I struggle with or how I view um, life and race and cultures. The Association of Directors of Children's Services, which represents those in charge of placing children in care, says some children have to be moved for their own safety. It admits too many are living far away, but says there's no government strategy to sufficiently increase the number of homes. <coughs> there's now someone new in Louise's life. At 22, she's raising her daughter, doing an internship with the civil service and thinking about university. She knows what she wants for both their futures. I want the best for her. I want her to be happy, healthy. I don't want her to ever have to worry about food, ever have to worry about bills. Like, I want her to always know that I always support her, always be there for her. She's working with the charity Become to highlight the damage that out-of-area placements can do. With the number of children in care rising, she says change is urgent. And what about the sisters? Having drifted apart, the twins are growing closer since Louise has become a mum. And although things have been strained with her younger sister, they're getting to know each other again. My experiences have shaped me, um, the good, the bad, the ugly, but they are made me who I am today. And I'm just really grateful that I'm able to come full circle now and be where I am now because, you know, to show that there is a light end of the tunnel and that just because you're going through a dark time or a bad patch, you know, that's not the end, you know, the days will get brighter, things will get better. It's just about having the right support around you to help pull you out through that and help you get back on the straight and narrow, yeah. Louise ending that report about her experience in care. And if you've been affected by any of those issues, there are places to seek help on channel4.com slash support. And while I was speaking to the Education Secretary, Gillian Keegan, earlier, I asked what the government was doing to prevent more cases like Louise's. £259 million has been spent on helping local authorities build more places closer to home. Um, the second thing we're doing, which is uh, part of the £200 million that we're investing in this, is to make sure that we have more uh, foster carers. Now, foster caring is fantastic and, and we do have a lot of people come forward. We just want to grow that and continue to grow that. So there's a lot of focus on making sure First of all, that if we can, we possibly can, we keep people with their parents, if not with the closer, wider family, people who love them already, uh, people who know them already, if not foster carers, and then for those that need residential care close to home. The Education Secretary earlier. Well, joining me now, Helen Hayes, Shadow Minister for Children and Early Years. Let's just look back at Louise's story, which is very powerful, sent 100 miles from home, separated from her twin and then racially bullied. What is your response to what you saw there? It's really distressing to hear Louise's story and how to see how, just how vulnerable she and her siblings were at the age that they were taken into care and what a damaging experience so many aspects of that placement proved to be 
for them. I think it's really important and all credit to Louise for being having the courage to speak out about her experience so publicly. Um, it's really important that those stories are told because her story is by no means unique. Mm. And this speaks to the state of the children's social care system after 13 years of conservative government that right. across the country far too many children are being sent far too far away from home. The education secretary you heard saying, you know, that children shouldn't be sent miles from home. Mm. Um, clearly a will, you know, a hope there that something can be done. Mm. But what would Labour's solution be to cases like Louise if you got into government? We certainly wouldn't have been so complacent as the Secretary of State has been to allow this situation to persist over such a long period of time and but this to deteriorate. Is a situation you will, will be in over such a long period of time. And it is a tough set of challenges to resolve. But it will be an absolutely core part of Labour's mission, should we be lucky enough to win the trust of the British people to form the next government, uh, to improve the lives of children in this country. Um, we will ensure that there is a proper grip from the centre of government. This practice of sending children long distances away from home isn't happening everywhere, but this government has been content to allow it to happen in far too many places. Right, I mean, obviously, a lot of those decisions are often based on cost, so it's going to be quite resource intensive to put this problem right. Mm. Are you prepared to spend what it takes to do that? Well, we need to be looking at the state of the public finances at the time of the next general election. This government has trashed the UK economy, the public finances are in a perilous state. There, so there you won't can't be. To people like Louise that things would be any better under a Labour are, government. We are looking in detail at how to improve children's social care. There is a huge evidence base to draw on and there is m very, very much good practice that, that also could be applied more widely. Um, this needs commitment. It also needs work over time. We will set out our proposals, our concrete costed proposals, closer to the next general election. Right. But I can absolutely guarantee that it will be a core mission of the next Labour government to get up and go to work right. every single day and, and work I, out how I, we I'm improve sure, the lives of I'm children. sure many people will be very happy to hear that, but there is also, there's not a lot of detail on some of those missions that you talk about. Um, you talk about an evidence base. There's an independent review of children's social care which was published last year. Will you commit to implement all of those recommendations in their entirety when you get into power, if you get into power? We, we will look at the, the state of the situation at the time of the next general election and we will work out what the state of the public finances allows us to commit to ahead of the election. We'll publish those proposals in due course. There is a very, very much good work in the independent review of children's social care. There are also proposals around which there is some controversy. Um, it, what's important is that we move forward with a set of proposals that start off on a road to improvement, that the language of missions is all about a long-term commitment to repair right. the damage that the Conservatives have done over 13 years of government. Helen Hayes, thanks very much.